Welcome to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast, hosted by former Army ROTC Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Rob Kirkland. In these episodes, we explore how to best prepare yourself to obtain one of these valuable scholarships for those applicants who wish to attend a college or university and become officers in the military. The application process can be complex and confusing. This podcast works to make it more understandable. And now, the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome uh, back to the uh, podcast here. Um, this week, um, I want to talk about uh, medical school and uh, ROTC. Uh, you know, when I'm dealing with uh, clients, uh, you know, I have a number of um, candidates who are interested in the possibility of going into uh, the armed services as a doctor and would like to start the process uh, as uh, starting out as an ROTC cadet and getting uh, their undergraduate paid for through an Army ROTC scholarship and then uh, then eventually then immediately following uh, going to law school. So if you play it right and you cho- and you understand the process, uh, you can really be in a situation where you can almost be zero out of pocket for expenses at the conclusion of medical school. So what I want to do today is kind of talk through the different routes for each military service and uh, the probability of being able to get into to go to medical school from ROTC with each service, Army, Air Force, and Navy. Uh, So let me go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do now is kind of tackle uh, each service and kind of talk about the process that uh, a cadet would go through in order to uh, become a doctor in that service. So let's first of all take uh, the Army as the first, uh, first, first one here. So first is from Army ROTC. So this is assuming that you are on an Army ROTC scholarship that you've started as a freshman at a college or university, and you're looking to eventually, after you graduate and become commissioned as an officer, after you obtain your bachelor degree, that you plan then to go to medical school and want to become a doctor in the United States Army. So there's two different routes uh, that you can take. You can go on active duty with an educational delay or reserve duty. So those are one of, those are two of the uh, options. So let me talk about each one of those and how they work. First is the active duty with an educational delay. So during the first semester of your senior year or or what's called the MS4 year, uh, a cadet uh, will go through their branching process. And at that time, of course, you'll be applying to medical school, uh, to go to medical school and be awaiting the decision in the spring about whether or not you would, you're, you, you, you have admission to medical school. So if a cadet receives, uh, so during the fall semester, you'll designate that you want a educational delay for medical school and you'll await the approval of that educational delay. Uh, and then in the spring, uh, you'll the cadet will receive an admission to an accredited uh, medical school or school school of osteopathic medicine. Me- medicine. Once you receive that uh, letter of admission, pretty much you're a guaranteed to be able to be given that educational delay. So again, getting into an accredited osteopathic school, medical school, or a regular medical school will guarantee you a educational delay to go to medical school. So once a candidate is commissioned as a second lieutenant after they complete their undergraduate degree, he or she would serve as in the individual ready reserve as you complete medical school. Once the officer completes medical school, uh, he or she would do a civilian or military residency and then serve as a doctor in the active army. So how would uh, they, you go about paying then uh, for medical school? Is uh, there's uh, The way that you do it for Army is through the Health Profession Scholarship Program, or the HPSP. And so uh, the way it's working in the Army now is if you get a 
an admission to an accredited DO program or medical school, you pretty much will get a health profession scholarship, uh, which will pay for medical school for all four years of medical school. So again, the H- HPSP scholarship is virtually guaranteed if the candidate has a letter of admission from an accredited medical school. Uh, a cadet uh, can also opt uh, to also or to, pl- uh, to apply to the Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences. This is known as USHUS. That's in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, so the difference between that and going to a regular school, a regular civilian school on the HPSP, is that the candidate as an officer would serve on active duty as a medical student rather than in, in the individual ready reserve. This is a full scholarship to medical school, and remember, it's not part of the HPSP. So service payback uh, is four years for Army ROTC scholarship and four years for the HPSP. So that's eight years. That clock starts after you complete residency. If a cadet goes to USHUS and has an Army ROTC scholarship before then, you must serve seven years for USHUS and four years for the Army ROTC scholarship. So a total of 11 years must be served uh, after you complete residency. So eight or 11 years service after uh, after, uh, the completion of residency. So you can see that taking ROTC scholarship and going to use shoes or using the HPSP program can be obviously a significant amount of time that you're going to be serving on active duty after you... um, complete residency. So that's just something to keep in mind if you combine the ROTC scholarship with uh, medical school or uh, whether that be through the HPSP or through USHUS. Let me uh, now turn to uh, the reserve duty and how that works. Okay, so uh, for Army ROTC, again, during your fourth year or or the fall semester, you would designate uh, that you want to go into into the guard or reserve and not on active duty. Uh, So uh, at this time with Army ROTC, you can go on into the reserve and guard pretty much. uh, It's it's non-competitive. It's competitive to go on active duty, but not competitive to go into the guard and reserve. So you can pretty much go into the guard and reserve uh, uh, and take that option. So what you would do is once you graduate and you go into the Guard and Reserve, the officer would serve in the Guard and Reserve while in medical school and in res- residency under the designation double zero E67 medical student. Once the residency is completed, the doctor would serve in the Guard or Reserve uh, as a doctor. Uh, service payback is eight years for Army ROTC scholarship, but this can be served concurrently while in medical school and residency as a double O E67. So if you're doing four years of medical school and four years of, uh, of residency and you're serving as a medical student uh, in the Guard or Reserve, that pretty much runs that clock out regarding uh, your Army ROTC uh, uh, commitment. Now, there is... Pay, there is uh, ways to pay for medical school if you're a guard or reserve uh, officer, and that's through the Healthcare Professional Loan Repayment Program, the HPLRP. Uh, it provides up to two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars by agreeing to a seven-year commitment with the guard or reserve. That's forty thousand dollars per year for six years, and ten thousand for the seventh year, with a two hundred fifty thousand lifetime cap. Payback for this scholarship begins at the end of the residency. So what you would do uh, if you were in a guard and reserve is you would take student loans for your medical school uh, and then make the decision uh, after you complete your residency and then how much you continue to want to serve in the guard or reserve and how much you need paid back. So say if your uh, bill, say if your uh, your medical school bill is 100 or $80,000 or $120,000, you can opt for three years 
continued service in the Guard and Reserve as a doctor to have those three years paid back. So it really gives you flexibility to make a decision on how much how much more time you want to serve in the Guard and Reserve as a doctor uh, and how much you want paid back. But again, there's, you know, the cap is $250,000 uh, over uh, a seven year commitment. So that's sort of how you'd uh, work it in, uh, in the Guard or Reserve. So you can see that uh, with the Army, uh, the pathway is pretty straightforward. The biggest challenge is really getting in to a medical school. But if you get into an accredited medical school or doctor of, of osteopathy uh, or osteopathic school, uh, you pretty much can count on being able to do that either through the Guard or Reserve or active duty and getting your, your school paid for or getting loans paid back through the loan repayment program. So I would say that the Army is probably the most straightforward and probable way to be able to get a, uh, to be able to go to medical school from Army ROTC. So let me go ahead and next talk about Air Force ROTC. The route uh, to become an Air Force doctor through Air Force ROTC is pretty much through active duty. So you don't really have the option so much of going through uh, the Air Reserve or the Air National Guard. So I'm just going to talk about the route through uh, active duty. Now, keep in mind that the amount of time you have to serve is, a, is the same as going active duty with the Army. So normally you'd have four years on active duty that you have to serve with an Air Force ROTC scholarship, and then four years after residency uh, for the if you decide to take the uh, medical scholarship through the Air Force. So Air Force is a little different in the way that they kind of handle uh, things uh, so there's a number of different ways that you can uh, do it with the Air Force ROTC. So each year, uh, Air Force ROTC identifies uh, cadets in the program to enter what's known as their pre-health program or the HPP during their sophomore year. Uh, if the cadet, Air Force ROTC cadet, is uh, selected for the HPP, they're guaranteed the Air Force Medical Scholarship, which is known as the AF. HPS dash or slash FAP if they are accepted into a medical school uh, prior to graduating from their undergraduate program. So again, if you're if you apply your sophomore year for the HPP for the pre-health program, get accepted, you're pretty much got your route uh, in order to go through your ROTC program, Air Force ROTC program, and then going into medical school and getting medical school paid for. So if pre-health, so you might ask, well, what if I'm not accepted to the pre-health program the sophomore year? Well, if you're not, you can still have a route to take. You can um, you can enter active duty as a line officer. Um, actually, no, let me back up here. So if you if the pre-health program cadets are not accepted into an accredited medical school prior to graduation, they have two options. So if you are in the HPP program and you don't, uh, get into medical school, you can either uh, go on active duty as a line officer or uh, apply for an educational delay. So, and then go into medical school at that point. Okay. So there are routes though, and this is what I was going to be talking about before I kind of backed up is there's also a route for medical school for non HPP cadets. If the, so the non HPP cadet can, uh, can apply to you shoes, and that guarantees that they're going to become an Air Force doctor. They can also apply for what's known as an educational delay to attend medical school. It should be noted that uh, only pre-HP, only the pre-HPP cadets are guaranteed the scholarship uh, to go to medical school. However, non-HPP cadets can apply for the scout for the Air Force medical scholarship. Uh, even though they weren't accepted into the pre-health program HPP during their sophomore year, so the current selection criteria for medical school for medical school scholarship for non-HPP cadets are pretty much um, if the applicant can get a uh, can get at least a three four undergraduate GPA with an MCAT score of five hundred four, they can uh, pretty much get in to get 
uh, medical school scholarship. So again, 3.4 undergraduate GPA with an MCAT score of 504 gets you uh, an Air Force medical scholarship, even if you're a non-HPP cadet. So, uh, so again, you know, to kind of go back again to the way the Air Force does it is that when you're an Air Force ROTC cadet in the sophomore year, you apply for the pre-health program, the HPP. Once you get accepted to that, you're pretty much, uh, you know, going to be able to go through your undergrad and graduate program paid for. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there's also roots. If you don't get into the pre-HPP program and you still decide you want to become a doctor, you can uh, take the uh, educational delay route and try to get into a medical school or to USUs and apply for a uh, Air Force medical scholarship. And if you reached a certain MCAT score with uh, a GPA, you pretty much can get an Air Force um, uh, medical, medical scholarship. Okay, so one other factor about Air Force ROTC is when applying for the Air Force ROTC scholarship uh, out of high school, this is, you know, when you first go into your undergraduate program, about uh, 70% or more of the scholarships are granted to technical majors. So that's an important point that I've made in pre- previous podcast. So the technical major you're going to want to designate as a medical school uh, to get ready for medical school is chemistry. So you're not going to be able to major in pre-med. You're going to have to major in chemistry pretty much and try to get as much uh, of your medical pre-med courses out of that chemistry major. So again, to maximize your chances, designate the major of chemistry out of high school and then try to maximize your courses in uh, medical school. Uh, I mean, in, as an undergraduate to be able to get those pre- prerequisites for uh, medical school. Okay, so that's Air Force ROTC. Let's talk about um, Navy. The route to uh, becoming a doctor in the, in the Navy ROTC is through uh, active duty. Okay, uh, Navy ROTC is definitely the most restrictive in regards to medical school. At this time, a maximum of 25 uh, NROTC midshipmen nationwide are given permission to apply for medical school each year. If admitted to medical school, they'll attend immediately following graduation. Uh, to enter the program, the midshipmen must gain acceptance into a medical school or into USUs. Uh, the, the active duty service obligation is the same as Army and Air Force going on active duty. Uh, like the Air Force, most Navy ROTC scholarships are given to what's known as Tier 1 and Tier 2 majors. So the, those majors that most align for medical school are biophysics and molecular biology, biotechnology cell and cellular biology, anatomical sciences, chemistry, and general science. So you're generally going to want to uh, pick a major within those Tier 1 and Tier 2 that align for your school as closely as possible to a pre-med uh, classes and major that you would take at a, at a university if you were going into medical school. So you can see pretty much from this, uh, at least the explanation so far, is that uh, Army is probably the most permissive, including the ability to be able to go into the Guard and Reserve to serve your uh, time in the, uh, in the military. The Air Force, uh, you know, has some hurdles with the uh, pre-HPP or the educational delay, but still uh, it's a pretty clear route on what you need to do in order to be able to become a doctor in the Air Force. Navy ROTC, you can see that uh, there's not a lot of slots, 25, and that, you know, one can conclude that Navy gets most of their doctors not from ROTC, but from other sources, either from direct commission or some, or perhaps the Naval Academy or some other way, and that uh, the Navy does not perceive Navy ROTC to be a route uh, to become a doctor in the Navy, unless you're one of the 25 people that uh, are then selected uh, to do that while a Navy while a Navy ROTC cadet. Uh, so um, finally, I want to just uh, talk to you about. Uh, dual admission programs. And these are uh, programs that are in a number of universities across the country that I think are worthy of your uh, 
research. And this is basically uh, candidates in high school know they want to be a doctor when they apply. Uh, and these are programs where if you complete the undergraduate program uh, in this kind of dual admission, that you're guaranteed to get into medical school. Uh, and uh, that can you know, be, I think, a really uh, can set up candidates mind at ease when they realize that if they get through the, their undergraduate program that they're guaranteed to go to medical school. And so one example is Nova Southwestern, or so, sorry, Nova Southeastern University, which is in the uh, Miami, General Miami or Fort Lauderdale area. And it provides, so that school, for example, provides guaranteed admission to their doctor of osteopathy program out of their undergraduate program. And uh, what I like about Nova Southeastern is that for Army ROTC cadets and Air Force ROTC cadets on a type one scholarship, Nova Southeastern provides free room and board for their undergraduate students. So if a candidate who secures admission to Nova Southeastern program, as well as an Army or Air Force ROTC scholarship, would have zero out of pocket for their undergraduate education. So room and board would be picked up and then close to a foolproof, in my mind, a close to a foolproof route uh, to becoming a doctor uh, in that their admission to medical school is guaranteed as long as they meet the prereq prerequisites. So uh, that's a great way, I mean, really coming out of high school uh, to pretty much have your route pretty much figured out for you. So no, I, I definitely would recommend checking out Nova Southeastern uh, as a possibility to uh, kind of take that route from high school all the way to becoming a doctor. So uh, overall, uh, Army ROTC is probably the most certain route to becoming a doctor in the armed services. And it also has the possibility uh, of serving out of residency as a doctor in the Army National Guard or Army Reserve. Uh, you know, if you're accepted to medical school, it's pretty much guaranteed that the Army ROTC cadet will receive an educational delay uh, if deciding on active duty or a medical school scholarship or educational payback. So that's pretty much, you know, you can count on that. For the Air Force route, I think is, is somewhat restricted in the need to apply for the pre-health program or the HPP or take a chance of receiving an educational delay. Uh, the non-HPP also has to compete for an Air Force Medical Scholarship. So um, probably the best way to work the Air Force, Force route is to make sure that you get into the pre-health program or the, the, the HPP program so that you can get that guarantee uh, through uh, undergraduate and then uh, on to medical school. Navy's uh, the most restrictive, obviously limiting the number to 25. Uh, it's probably too low of a number, I think, to count on Navy ROTC in there as a route uh, to become a doctor. So, you know, if you're not too hung up on which service to become a doctor, uh, my strong recommendation to you would be to, to opt for the Army uh, and then the Air Force and uh, and 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 then decide from there what you know, and then decide from there what kind of route you want to take. But, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, my podcast here today. And I hope it was uh, informative to you on kind of how uh, the Army, Navy and Air Force ROTC kind of handle their, uh, their cadets who want to go to law school. I mean, who want to go to medical school, excuse me, there'll be a separate uh, podcast that I'm going to do here next time that's going to talk about law school. So, uh, so uh, please, you know, visit uh, my website at uh, rotcconsulting.com uh, if you have any uh, further questions about uh, how medical school works for the ROTCs. And, um, you know, be great. it would be uh, great to hear from you. So uh, take care and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. If you like what we're doing, please leave a quick review. If you have any questions or want more information about ROTC or our consulting services, please visit our website at rotcconsulting.com. Take care, and we'll see you next time.